Hey everyone, Sidarthus here, back with my next Daisy server tutorial. This time we're going over Daisy Editor, which allows you to edit the game world in an offline mode and create custom areas that you can add to your server. It also includes a loot editor, but I'll be going over that in a separate video. There are two main parts to this mod. The editor, which is run on your normal computer via the standard Daisy launcher, and the loader which only gets added to a server, but is only needed if you plan to delete items from the default game world. So let's jump into it. From your desktop, you'll need to make sure your Steam account is subscribed to CF, Dabs Framework, Builder Items, and of course, Daisy Editor. Once you're subscribed to them, open the normal Daisy launcher and enable those mods. I've also enabled Much Stuff Pack and Expansion, just because I have items in those mods that I'd like to have access to, as well as using the Expansion Map. So if you want to add items from other mods, like Static Weapons to display at a trader, make sure you load those mods here. Once your mods are loaded, start the game. Click Open Editor and select the map you're going to use. Let's go over some basic controls. When you load in, you'll be in camera view. Your camera will be linked to your mouse movement. To unlink this, you can press the spacebar. And now you can move your mouse around the screen. Let's have it follow the mouse for now. Pressing Y toggles the HUD. The W, A, S, and D keys move you in the standard directions. Holding shift with one of the direction keys will increase your movement speed. And holding alt with one of the direction keys will decrease your movement speed. To increase the camera elevation, press Q. And to decrease it, press Z. If we unlink the camera and mouse, you can hold the right mouse button to look around and even use the W, A, S, and D keys in combination to move around. Pressing the M key will open the map. You can click and drag to navigate around the map. And clicking the middle mouse button will teleport the camera to where the cursor is. Let's look at some of the environment settings and preferences. Here we can change the date and time and control the weather. We can also turn on the Darken Nights option. In the preferences, you can set up things like logs, autosaves, and view distance. I personally like to turn off the on screen logs. You can change the default camera speed in the camera section. There are more settings, but I'll let you discover them for yourself. On to editing controls. I'm going to bring up the map, and let's go over to Belota, where we can add some tents with some loot. We can search in the left side menu, click on an object, and it will add it to our cursor. Each new item we place will have a marker. We can click on the marker to select it. If we click and hold, we can drag the object around. And if we hold the left shift, and click and drag the object, we can rotate it. And if we hold the left alt button and click and drag, we can raise and lower the object. We can even double click on the marker and adjust the position here as well. This tool in the top is the magnet tool. 
this is helpful to place an object level with the terrain below it. The next tool is the ground mode tool. So when you move the object around, it will keep the same distance from the ground wherever you move it. Finally, the collision tool. You're placing an object and the editor detects there's something in the way, it will try to place the object above or below it. As of right now, this tool does seem to be bugged, and I'm not sure when this will be fixed. I'm going to place a few more items around just for demonstration. We can left click and drag to select multiple items. The rotation and elevation tools from earlier work for multiple items. But keep in mind when rotating multiple items that the rotation is based off the item you have selected to rotate around. Once we're happy with the placement, we can save the file, but we aren't done yet. If we add this file as it is now to the server, the tents will spawn fine, but they won't have any loot. So we need to go to File, Export, Export Map Group POS. I like to keep this file name the same as the DAISY editor file and add POS to the end of it. And then we can exit the editor. Back on your desktop, go to your user profile, documents, DAISY editor. For the sake of this video, we're gonna copy both the DAISY editor file and the POS file we exported and then go to your server and paste them on the desktop for now. Then move the DAISY editor file to the MP mission folder, whichever folder your map is, and then finally the editor files. And then open the map group POS file we copied earlier. Copy the lines between the open and close marks and open up the map group POS file located in your MP mission folder, your selected map, and paste in the lines. Remembering to use notes to organize your file. Save the file. and then we can start the game server. And then load into the game. I'm going to teleport to an area near the tents so the game has some time to load in any possible loot. Then make our way over to the tents. And we should see some loot in the newly added tents. So 
something to keep in mind is that you don't have to add all of your areas into one file. Create different files for different areas. So if you want to add stuff to Belota like we are, save this file, name it Belota. And if you want a custom black market file across the map, start up a new file and save it and then add that to the server. This video just touched the surface of what Daisy Editor can do. Check out the Daisy Editor Discord where you can get much more help with the editor. If you found this helpful, hit the like button and subscribe for more content in the future. Thanks.